Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great day. We're at Friday. Uh, the week is ending for some of you guys who have five day work weeks. Uh, the weekend is ending for those of us who uh, tend to work at least six days a week. We still have one more day uh, in the holster and we, we, we still got some things we need to do. I'm always on the move. I'm always thinking. I'm always striving to see how I can be better, what I can do, how can I be more impactful, how can I help people uh, change their lives? What What is it that I could be doing differently that will make me more impactful? I want my time here on earth uh, to be a legacy of helping people and doing way more uh, to lift and build than to harm. Um, and that's my focus and that's my desire. And I move through life really, truly trying to be the best version of myself so that I can help others do the same. Uh, so I'm excited about where we are uh, with Rick Wallace Enterprises and all that entails, the different uh, entities and organizations and companies and all this stuff that we're working hard and you know we're in a uh we're in the midst of growing pains uh so much potential to push out and so much is required so uh it's crazy right now but definitely i'm giving it everything i have and i'm enjoying the challenge and i'm taking it on head first and i and i, I i'm just excited um you know, I get excited when the challenges come because life has shown me that when you persevere through the challenges that things happen. And so it's not in the absence of adversity that things happen. It's in the persistence and perseverance and resilience and and, and being relentless that things happen. And and so I encourage you, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at, no matter what's happening, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you. I'm challenging you. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't, don't, don't let momentary circumstances and situations shut you down because it's on the other side of that struggle, on the other side of that heartache that you're going to find the, 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 the diamond uh, in the rough. The thing that you've been striving for isn't laying out in the midst of ease and, and the absence of adversity. Don't let adversity shake you loose of that thing you, 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 you hold dear and you desire. Your destiny has a path that is replete with challenges. But when you persevere, things happen. Uh, be before I move on, uh, with what I want to share with you today, uh, I want to remind you that I'm in the process of writing book number 25. And every time I say that, I mean, my heart comes alive because I know what it took to just get book one published. And here we are having published 24 and writing 25 and I'm excited about it. Um, and what I've done is those who are following me know this, I have set up a sponsorship program where people can actually sponsor space in the book to memorialize, pay tribute to, commemorate something, uh, pay tribute to someone who has been an impact in their lives. And, it, and, and there's no minimum on the sponsorship. If you sponsor a dollar, you will have your name in the book and you can write your lines to commemorate who you want to commemorate. And there, as you move up, there are other things that uh, you can actually do depending on the size of your sponsorship. But I want people to be able to celebrate somebody and have it stamped in history. Uh, and it's as I commemorate 25 books, I want you to be able to uh, celebrate someone, uh, something. Oh, you know, like I said, it, it doesn't have to be someone. You can put in there on this year, I got my bachelor's, my master's on this year, I married the love of my life and whatever it is, you can memorialize it in this book. And like I said, there's no minimum sponsorship. Obviously, as sponsorships go up, you get other things like a $25 sponsorship or more will get you the book. A uh, hundred dollar sponsorship or more will get you a dedicated page where that entire page is yours. Uh, 
a $500 sponsorship will get you the dedicated page. Plus you'll be able to submit a picture of whoever it is you are memorializing or paying tribute to. That's that. Got that out of the way. Also, there are going to be some other resources uh, in the description box as well. If you're looking to work with me on a one on one basis, you're looking to take the next step and you don't know where to start and you need help. Uh, I would love to tell I have two long term spaces open right now. We're doing some programs where we're doing 30 day uh, holistic transformation and those, you know, are, are, are still ongoing. But as far as long term, when I talk about long term, uh, that's either 12 weeks or longer. Uh, I have uh, programs that run all the way up to 52 weeks an entire year. Uh, if you want to do that, reach out to me. Um, if you can't get to me, you can email me or hit me in my inbox or dot DM me. But you can email me at CEO at Rick Wallace, Ph.D. dot link. Now, moving on. Uh, your self-awareness, your identity how you are defined in this world will play a massive role in what you're able to do. Uh, how you see yourself, your self-image, your self-concept. The problem that I see probably more than anything else when it comes to uh, self-identity is that most people are walking underneath an identity that someone else assigned to them. They're walking underneath an identity of someone else's perception of who they are and what they are capable of. Some are walking under the perception given to them by frustrated parents and uh, uh, teachers and, and, and clergy and, and peers. You know, some people are walking under a definition of being uh, learning disabled. Some are walking under the definition of being average and, and and not capable of achieving anything beyond average. You, you're going to be average at best and, and, and you're going to be poor. Uh, you're going to be unimpactful. And my, my question is, who is defining you? And normally when you've allowed someone else to define you, you have also allowed someone else to write the narrative of your life. Someone else is writing your story, right? laying it out, and you're just living it or existing in it. You have to be willing to define yourself. You have to be willing to search yourself. Take an introspective examination to discover what's on the inside and then realize that you are capable of doing so much more than what you're doing right now. I've been blessed to do some unbelievable things in my life. I just mentioned, you know, having written 24 books and writing the 25th as we uh, uh, do this do, do this particular session. That's just one thing, uh, the number of companies and all this. And I'm not saying it to brag. That's why I don't talk in great detail about what it is, because it's not about me bragging. It's about saying, look, it wasn't that anything inside of me that was different or better than anyone else. It was that I was able to see inside of myself that something special. And I made up in my mind that I wasn't going to let anybody talk me out of my greatness. I wasn't going to let anybody talk me out of success. And even in that, even in the 25 books written, the 46 companies over 30 years, all of this stuff, you know, there have been some ups and some downs, some crashes. There have been some difficult moments. Like I said, we're going through growing pains right now, but it's a beautiful thing. Uh, when you look at where we are going, it's taking some tough things to get there because we're expanding on a way that is necessary and it's crazy and it, it, it's challenging and all that. But 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 even with all of that being done, there's not a day I wake up and realize there's more. I haven't even gotten to it all. I haven't tapped it all. There's more growing to do. There's more impact there. There's more power there. And what I'm telling you is no matter where you come from, no matter what you've been through, no matter how many times you've gone through something that you felt disqualified you, it actually only uh, prepared you. I remember talking uh, to someone in the mid 90s that I respected. 
and uh, we were talking. Oh, wow. Hey, T. I mean, I haven't seen uh, seen or talked to you in a while, um, but I, I'm sitting there and we're talking and I'm going through this phase, right, where I'm rebelling in every way possible. You know, I, I'm getting tattoos. I got earrings, everything that will kind of take me out of this idea that I have a purpose in changing people's lives and dealing with people on that level. I want to do my thing, uh, be me. I didn't want anybody pegging me in this little place and squeezing me in. And the guy that uh, I, I still have a lot of love for today was a pastor. And, you know, I had access to him through a family member. Uh, and so we talked on levels that were outside of the realm of pastor, uh, member type thing. This was one-on-one, -on -one, mano, mano on mano, uh, somebody who was slightly older than me that I respected. And he said, you do realize that all the things you're doing isn't going to disqualify you from your calling. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those that he calls. The very thing that you're doing in an attempt to disqualify yourself from your destiny and purpose is actually qualifying you. A lot of the people that you're going to reach are going to be able to relate to you for the things you're doing now that thinks you disqualify. You can't be disqualified from your purpose. You can run from it. You can hide from it. You can sit down and set it down. But when you look at it, it's still waiting on you. Greatness is still waiting on you. People need you to be at your best right now. People need you to be able to see and do and, and, and touch lives at the level you're capable of. The problem is a bunch of you are still operating off of the label that someone else used to define you years ago. You're still operating off a label that says poverty. You're still operating off a label that says uh, uh, not smart, uh, mentally challenged, intellectually challenged. Uh, relationally challenged, uh, 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 you know, all these things that you're looking at and say, man, I just, just happy to be alive. I'm just happy to be able to have a job. I'm just, and, and, and there's so much more. There. And again, this isn't about making anybody feel small for what you do. What you do should be contingent upon your passion. If you're, if you're absolutely on fire with what you're doing, it doesn't matter where you're doing it at. If you're on fire about doing it and you are being respected and appreciated in the environment in which you're doing it, it, it doesn't matter. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to belittle anybody. What I'm saying is don't play yourself small. Don't let somebody else define you. Don't let somebody else write your narrative. But a lot of people out there, and I guarantee you somebody watching this right now is sitting there and living a life based off of something someone else told them was going to be a part of who they were. Someone else defines you. So even when you're out looking for opportunities, you only look for opportunities that are within the confines of this idea of who you are. You never look outside the box. You never look upward beyond the level at which you exist because you've been talked into the notion that that's where you belong. You've been talked into the notion that poverty is your lot in life. You've been talked into the notion that disrespect, harm, and hurt is your lot in life. You've been talked into the idea that being distant and unloved is your lot in life. And so you don't seek anything beyond that because you are living within your lot in life and you just realize or you feel like that's all I'm ever going to have. That's all I'm ever going to be. No, you weren't designed for mediocrity. You were designed for greatness. You were designed to be exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal. There are people waiting on you to walk in your purpose because your life will be the testimony that convinces them that they can do the same. There's something about your life that's calling you right now to step out and move into something better. Yeah, there's uncertainty. Yeah. There's challenge. Yeah, there are going to be naysayers. Yeah, there are actually going to be people that are going to want to celebrate every darn challenge and failure you run into. There are people literally praying for your demise and you've done nothing to them. 
or it's people that you had issues with a while back that can't let go of something that happened in the past. Let me let me tell you something quick on a side note. You are not required to mortgage your future in order to pay for your past. Do your best to make amends to the people that you've wronged. Make the changes you need to make in your life so that that doesn't happen again. And you move forward because there are some people who will literally live their entire life to hold you hostage based on something you did 10 years ago. Do not mortgage your future attempting to pay for your past. Back to what I'm talking about. It's going to be up to you to step from underneath the label that someone else gave you that doesn't truly apply to you. You have a definition and an identity associated with the most high. You were put here not to be a footstool, but to be a point of inspiration, to be a point of change, to be a point of impact. If you are not in a place where you can look and see how you are touching lives, you're not living in the fullness of your purpose. Something my, my, my grandfather told me. He said, son, you got to learn how to feel your space. I'm like, daddy, what are you talking about? He said, you got to learn how to feel your space, son. He says, every time you walk into a room, you got to have in your mind that you're going to leave the room in a better condition than you found it. That you're going to feel your space, that as you come in contact with people, you're going to leave them in a better condition than you found. It. You're going to help way more than you harm. You've got to feel your space. What am I saying that? I'm saying that because if you're not touching lies, if you're not inspiring people, I, I don't mean you got to touch lives the way I do it. I mean, there are so many different ways you can bless people. There are so many ways you can inspire people. I'm going to tell you something. Make your life a living testimony of what's possible in this world, and you will change the lives of many. Because whether you know it or not, you're being observed. Whether you know it or not, people are watching to see how you're going to come out of this, if you're going to come out of it. And even some of the ones that are rooting against you will have a shift in paradigms when they see what your faith in your purpose and your commitment and your consistency does for you. See, a lot of people are hating because they think they can't get there. And a lot of people don't want to be left behind. So when they see you changing your mind, it's a conviction on them that they are remaining and accepting where they're at. So they got two choices. They can make up in their mind to come out or find ways to pull you back in. That is what you've got to realize is that you're not here just for you. Now, will you benefit from being a blessing? Yeah. The universal law of reciprocity, what you sow, you reap, what you plant, you harvest. When you send out positive energy, when you put it out in the world, it comes it nine times out of 10, it doesn't come back from the way where you planted it. Now, sometimes it does. Sometimes it comes back indirectly. I have literally seen times where I've planted a seed in somebody. And see, I like to tell people instead of just affecting people, I like to infect them. Doc, what do you mean? I want to be contagious with my faith. I want to be contagious with my passion. I want to be contagious with my purpose. I want to be contagious with my hope and anticipation of what's going to happen tomorrow so that when I come in contact with somebody, I don't just affect them. I infect them. I infect them with my very hope, my very passion, my very belief in what's possible. I become something that they take on to themselves and then they go out and because it's contagious, they infect people. I've literally had it where I've touched somebody and they've gone out and touched somebody who touched somebody. And that person comes back and blesses me. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you get a blessing that has nothing to do with what you've planted over here. It's just that the harvest is so powerful and the energy is so strong and great that it comes back through someone else. But it will not be disrupted. What you put out, good or bad, is coming back. 
Don't let the momentary presentation of a temporary reality trick you into giving up on your vision. Rise to the occasion. Stay focused, stay centered, stay committed. I'm telling you that the vast majority of victories that I've experienced in my life wasn't because of how smart I was, wasn't because of how many people I knew, what <coughs> wasn't because of any access to any particular resource. It was because I refused to quit. <coughs> it was because I refused to give up. It was because I was relentless. I set out to do something and I when I set out to do something <clears throat> Hello uh Nisha Mail. Uh when I set out to do something, I have a two options, but two options. I'm going to either do it or I will die while trying. There's no time limit on it. I don't give up because it gets hard. I don't turn around because, oh man, I've been doing this for this long. No, if I take it on, it's because I believe in it. If I believe in it, I'm going to keep going until I get it. I'm going to keep going until I do it. I'm going to keep going until I fit. Why? I will not leave a legacy of quitting. That is what I want to put on your heart. Do not leave a legacy of constantly jumping from one thing to another because it gets hard. You may have to adjust your gait. You may have to adjust your approach, but you don't change your direction. If you decide that that's your destiny, you walk it. You walk it with purpose, you walk it with passion, and you make up in your mind that absolutely nobody's going to change my mind. I have something that I have worth living my life for, and I'm going out and I'm going to do it. And when you start touching lives, oh, the gates of abundance are going to open. And they're going to open in more than one way. We have been trained to judge our success based on how many zeros are in the bank account. But there's so much more to wealth than money. And that's what makes so many of us frustrated is we don't know how to appreciate other areas of abundance. I mean, to me, my greatest abundance outside of family and all of that stuff that's obvious, but I'm talking about on a next level, like really intangible. My greatest level of abundance is my hope and my resourcefulness. What does it mean? If I don't have it, I figure out a way to get it. And I have a hope that can't be shaken. My circumstances don't shake me. My circumstances don't turn me around. My circumstances don't break me. My circumstances, I know for a fact momentarily. I'm so connected to the most high on a spiritual level that I can literally sit up and be in tune with the most high, communicating on a spiritual level. You got to be like 600 hurts a higher. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go back and watch some of my videos on spiritual energy. I'm talking about real measurable spiritual energy. You can measure on a hertz scale. When you get up to 600, that means you have exceeded the point of gratitude. You've exceeded the point of love. I mean, internal universe. I mean, like not because of how somebody feels about you or you feel about somebody, but the entire notion and idea of embodying love. That, that not, now you're up in that place where you're starting to move into revelation, where God can reveal things to you that opens doors for you. You are not at 600. And when you're communicating with God at that level, there'll be something that just something in your spirit that will disagree with your circumstances. You see the circumstance. It's factual. It's right there. But something in your spirit will disagree with it. Why? Because your spirit operates on the power of faith, which transcends facts. That's how people who are facing the facts that says you can't can.
what's the difference between those who succeed and those fail? Um, I know Henry Ford once said it, and I think it goes back a lot further than Henry Ford, uh, all the way back, if I'm not mistaken, to Plato, but he said, those who believe they can and those who believe they can't are usually both right. What are you believing about your life? What are you believing about yourself? What are you believing about your future? What are you believing about your purpose? Are you still holding on to the label that someone gave you when you were five, six, 10, 12, 14? Are you still holding on to a label that a disrespectful and broken partner gave you as you moved into adulthood? Well, what I'm trying to tell you is there's something deeper inside of you that is the true uh, measurement of your identity and it's greatness. And you've got to look inside of yourself and you've got to connect with that purpose. You've got to connect with that identity and you got to start walking in it. Stop letting other people define you and stop letting other people write the narrative to your life. Pick up the pen, define yourself, then start writing the narrative and write with specificity and power right with an anticipation of unbelievable and powerful things to come. I challenge you to do that. Now, don't forget, that um, you can sponsor uh, book 25, like I was saying in the beginning, go back and watch it if you haven't watched it from the beginning. Uh, you can sponsor a space in book 25 to memorialize anybody you want to memorialize. There's no minimum. If you want to learn, learn more about it, click the box and go check it out. And you can memorialize someone or uh, pay tribute to someone or celebrate some uh, milestone you've reached in your life or whatever. Uh, click the link and go check it out. There's no minimum sponsorship whatsoever. Everybody who sponsors, don't care if it's 50 cent, you will end up in this book. Uh, with your statement uh, of appreciation, statement of acknowledgement, memorialization, whatever it is, it'll be in there. Uh, also, if you're looking to work with me on a one on one basis, reach out. On that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. As I always say, I will live my life on full. I live my life on full every day so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I'm not taking anything with me. I challenge you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out of here.